my name is Dr. Rita Scully and I'm a lecturer at Limerick Institute of Technology in Ireland. This is the first of two videos on the Pythagorean theorem or the Pythagoras theorem. I will introduce and explain the Pythagoras theorem and I will demonstrate two proofs of the Pythagoras theorem. In video two I will demonstrate how to apply the Pythagoras theorem to solve the unknown sides of a right angle triangle. What you know. To help you understand the Pythagoras theorem, it would help to review some information on formulas, equations and triangles. Formula, a concise way of expressing information symbolically. An equation is a statement that says the equality of two expressions. Triangles is a plane figure with three straight sides and three angles. It would also assist to review equiangular and similarity in triangles. There are some key words that we use in this video. Pythagoras theorem provides the relationship between the sides of a right angle triangle. A right angle triangle consists of two legs and a hypotenuse. The two legs must meet at 90 degrees or a right angle. The hypotenuse that is the longest side in a right angle triangle and it is opposite the right angle. The Pythagoras theorem tells us the relationship in every right angle triangle. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The Pythagoras th theorem is normally stated as in a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The Pythagoras theorem tells us the relationship in every right angle triangle. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The Pythagoras th theorem is normally stated as in a right angle triangle the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The Pythagoras theorem has numerous proofs. In this video I will demonstrate two proofs. Proof 1 the area of the squares and proof two equiangular triangles. Proof one. If a triangle has a right angle and you make a square of each of the three sides then the biggest square has the exact same area as the other two sides put together. So the square of a, a squared, plus the square of b, b squared, equals the square of c, c squared. The basis of this proof can be expanded into the more established proof. Proof 2. If we draw a perpendicular line BD onto the line AC, we know that the triangle ADB is equiangular 
to the triangle ABC. The ratio of the line AD over the line AB is equal to the ratio of the line AB over the line AC because of the condition for similarity. We can write this as AB squared equals AD multiplied by AC. Also, the triangle BDC is equiangular to the triangle ABC. The ratio of the lines CD over BC are equal to the ratio of the lines BC over AC because of the condition for similarity. This can be written as BC squared equals CD multiplied by AC. Adding these two equations together, 1 and 2, we get the equation AB squared plus BC squared equals AD multiplied by AC plus CD multiplied by AC. This can be rewritten as AB squared plus BC squared equals AC multiplied by AD plus CD. Since AD plus CD equals AC, we can rewrite this equation as AC squared equals AB squared plus BC squared. Hence, the Pythagoras theorem is proven. what you have learned. The Pythagoras theorem is the best known mathematical theorem. It provides the relationship between the sides in a right angle triangle. A right angle triangle consists of two legs and a hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right angle triangle and it is the side opposite the right angle. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It is stated as in a right angle triangle the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides.